Happy New Year, Johnny. Happy New Year, William. Long time no see. Yes, What happened? It ha- <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been almost a month. We had a lockdown. I got corona you myself. You got corona. Um, so happy to be healthy again and so appreciative that we can be here and continue our thing and hopefully no such long break yes. in the future. So I remember before everything, I mean, before you got Corona, before Switzerland experienced this new lockdown, I remember we were talking on the phone. We were so excited. We wanted to do so many things here. So it's a break, I think, we would have never taken, if not because it was forced upon us. But on the other end, it was so, so good to do such a break. And, you know, I took advantage of it to do really cool things, which usually I wouldn't have time to do plus with the end of the year holidays. And I think you did too, right? I did as well. I have my video editing in React project coming up, probably still this month, which I'm really excited. And I'm also really excited what you have been doing if you have enough time and the will to work on something. Yeah, I did work on a cool uh, side project. Also, I've been doing a lot of editing which brings us to Remotion, the project you're, you're working on. Yes, that's right. So um, I would say it's like, in general, I want to go into the field of motion graphics, like something similar that After Effects is doing, not really what like Final Cut or Premiere is doing, where you like import 4K footage. Um, but like this, uh, yeah, motion graphic kind of stuff. I think this is where... Remotion is trying to find its place. First time you mentioned Remotion on, on the podcast, one question I asked you was, because I didn't understood the, I didn't understand the space yet very well, and I was asking, is there really a class of animations where it really makes sense to do it in React Native in compared to using other Pro Tool? Or is it just because if you know React, you can do motion graphics, which is already huge, right? Because you don't have to learn a new tool, a new technology. And now, because during the holidays, I spent so much time to to do um, video editing and so on. I know that there is a class of animations for which it makes much more sense to use a tool like Remotion than to use After Effects or Fusion, for instance. Yeah, right. Like one thing that like now I'm trying to prepare the trailer for Remotion and of course I'm doing the trailer in Remotion Um, as you do (laughs) (laughs) only makes sense and I mean since it's like going to be really targeted towards developers I'm I'm gonna like even show a bit of code during the video and using Remotion I was able to use the npm package prism to do syntax highlighting um, and like animate the code and uh, that this is like just one example that wouldn't have been possible uh, in After Effects. I would have had to like color all the all the text myself. Yes, I cannot wait to use uh, Remotion for my own videos. I have really strong use cases for it. I hope that uh, I will get to play with it before you know, like how the Christmas holidays were a time where you could work on fun projects and things you wouldn't have time to work on usually. And so I ha- I hope that I get the time to work on to use Remotion before uh, Christmas holidays uh, 2021. For Absolutely, sure, yes. definitely, yes. <laughs> much uh, sooner than that. So I have a question. You said it's coming out um, in soon. What does it mean? Like, you know, how do you decide? So does it mean right now it's like a private repo and you're gonna make it public at some point? How do you decide uh, such a process? you know, how to do things? Um, well, first I, I try to decide which features can I omit that are not um, that crucial and uh, still put it out. Kind of like to decide what is the MVP scope and then I just, uh, I try to do it as fast as possible. And of course in my life, um, I I don't plan things so much. I just, if I'm motivated, I work on it. And so there's also like no timeline per se. Um, But I mean, of course, in my head, I can imagine like 
I, I know how much finished it is, and I think it's like 90% finished. I The framework is pretty much done. I am writing documentation using Docusaurus, and it's also pretty much... Uh, is it a game changer? Docusaurus? Well, I mean, yes, I it's... I love how the fast refresh is working. The teaming is great. Um, the like how I was able to use the free motion colors and um, yeah, it was like a very opinionated template in the beginning, but uh, very similar to like the React or the React Native documentation. And I really like that it's in a similar style. You get the search via Ag Agoria or? the Agoria search or you didn't configure it yet or how does it work? I didn't configure the search yet um, but I know that it works using Algolia um, who are and is it, I think yeah I'm wondering if it's easy to set up the Agoria search so I am using Algolia for another project of mine okay um, and yeah it's like so nice to to be able to to like create an index easily, it's actually like so fast. You basically just upload a JSON file and then they do everything for you. And they give you extra customization options. So you can set up aliases. So if somebody searches for like a different keyword, then they still give you the, then you can redirect them to the right result. You can, uh, yeah, like the autocomplete and everything is very, Nice. They it's like very good at handling typos. Um, so yeah, I think for open source it's great. They support open source projects. You can get it for free, and uh, yeah, even commercially, I think it has some it has some merit. You said I think the uh, right now it's a private repo, right? So what's the uh, I'm I'm really like genuinely curious for myself. What's the thinking about like? Or right now it makes sense for this repo to be private and then when I release, I make it public. Or you could still do the development publicly also. Uh, is it just like random kind of? Like right now it's private, but it could be public. Or is there really like some reasoning behind and uh, like you follow a process? How does it work? Hmm. Well, I kind of uh, fear that like somebody will just look at it right now and then like start start using it and then I'm like uh, more afraid to do like breaking changes later okay so right now I, I can like change my mind in the last second and will be okay also I think there, it's nice to have like a to launch a it grand bang. release yeah okay yeah that's fair cool yeah so what have you learned about video editing and uh, over the holidays so that's or is that also in a private repo uh, no, but maybe I, it should have been done in a private repo. <laughs> no, so that's funny because so I did a lot of uh, video editing during the holidays and a couple of interesting things. So first, now if you've seen my latest videos, the format is a bit different and I'm really looking uh, for feedback around this format. So now I'm like, oh, if I'm looking at my phone, you should see my face and my phone, if I'm looking at the screen, you should see my face and the screen. Um, and I set up scenes like this, but maybe, you know, I'm still trying to figure out like what visually makes the most sense for these programming tutorials and I'm looking for feedback, but then I'm playing with these tools to, to make these videos, which are really cool. And the one interesting thing is that I learned everything on YouTube, right? So I, I would just Google YouTube videos. And so when I got started with my YouTube channel, I really didn't have in mind the idea of doing tutorials. I just wanted to challenge myself. Can it be done in React Native and show it to people? So I never had the mindset, you know, the ed educational mindset or the mindset of this is a tutorial. Now, by learning this uh, editing software, I needed tutorials. And I, I saw by, you know, seeing these communities of YouTubers that show you how to do these uh, editing things, I saw what tutorials are like and I was this time in the seat of the user where I needed the precise information and I needed it quick and it's interesting because I also stumbled on people who were doing a bit 
what I was doing with, for instance, Cannibal in React Native, where they would show you impressive things. They wouldn't necessarily explain you the basics. And for me, it was actually quite upsetting. So I remember I was looking for an information and then I found this, this video of where the guy was doing something incredible, but you could tell that he was just challenging himself doing it and he was not really explaining anything and there is so much implicit knowledge he was using. And I remember that it made me mad, kind of, because it was wasting my time, my time kind of. And I was like, oh, but that's exactly what you're doing sometimes in your videos. <laughs> um, so for me, it's... Um, was interesting to see how much value also I got from these tutorials. So sometimes, you know, you have like a five minute videos and it saves you hours, days of work. So now to be in the seat of the audience, it made me realize how valuable they can be. And it made me realize what's really a tutorial and, you know, in which context they are used where, you know, I'm trying, I'm working on a project and I'm trying to get uh, precise information quickly which is not really the mindset I have when I make my videos. You know, I want to show you something cool. I want to show you something I'm excited about. And I feel, I don't know, for me, it was super interesting. Um, do you yourself watch um, tutorials on YouTube and stuff like that? I think I, I learned everything on YouTube and <laughs> similar sites. Um, yeah, and so many techniques. I, I started off like watching PHP tutorials. They wouldn't like even explain it or have the webcam, but just like run like, generic techno music in the background and uh, and start coding and use like captions so i i think that's like i mean of course that you i still learn from that but i that was like more like the low end of a uh, tutorial production but you can take it really far you can like set up lights microphones you can make cuts and uh you can increase like there's such a wide spectrum of uh what you can do and um of course you have uh you are like constantly refining your setup and like thinking about these things okay what what is a tutorial what information do i need to come you are becoming a better instructor um one thing which i noticed also in uh, watching these uh, video tutorials which is the same i guess if you watch uh, react native video tutorial is that sometimes I was stubborn on videos where the knowledge, I could tell already that uh, actually after a while when I started to become experimented kind of, I could tell that the information in the video was outdated, which I mean, if you <laughs> Google for some of my videos, unfortunately, you know, the space is moving so fast that also some of the stuff becomes outdated quickly. And uh, yeah, it was interesting to see the overlap. Another interesting thing is it made me realize how small the, or how niche the React Native community is. Because, you know, I thought, okay, React Native, it's a small niche of uh, professional developers using it. Should be the same for video editing. But obviously, by, you know, trying to, to learn through these tutorials, it made me realize how much bigger the community is. It's an order of magnitude. It's not even the same scale. Um, so that was also interesting <laughs> to see how niche and React Native is, actually. It kind of makes sense that video editors make a lot of videos on, to, on YouTube. <laughs> no, but I mean in this particular software, and you know what I mean, because then you split. It's like programming, there are a lot of developers, but then you split into like technologies, programming language, and so on. But still, Absolutely. it's... Uh, I think it's still a niche, still in the beginning, but I mean, with what React Native essentially does is to, instead of having to create two apps, you have to create one app. I think it's only bound to blow up even more. 